Here in the Dragon's Den, more cash-hungry entrepreneurs are nervously waiting to pitch to our multimillionaire investors. They all have business ideas and inventions they think could make their fortunes, but they need investment to move forward. The Dragons can give them that investment, but they're risking their own money, so only the most profitable ideas will succeed. And first up is Ling Valentine, who moved to the UK eight years ago and started a company in Gateshead based on an American concept. She's now seeking £50,000. Remember the rules, though. She has to get all the money she's come for, or she leaves with nothing. Hello. I'm Ling, my famous Chinese nuclear missile truck, my trademark. I'm Ling Valentine. Today I'm here to present Ling'sCast.com. I'm looking for an investment of £50,000 for a 5% share of my company. Ling'sCast.com is a website where customers can select a brand new car to rent for normally two or three years. It's a very cheap way to run a brand new car and um, it's called Contra Hire. The market is growing for people who just want to rent a car for fixed monthly cost. In the, U in the US, um, more than 20% of the cars are purchased by this way, but while in the UK, less than 1%. On my website, people choose the car they want. If they got good credit history, the car will be delivered to them. Easy. On average, I sell one, one million pounds worth of car a month. I have made over £100,000 gross profits in each of the last two years. I want you to give me £50,000 so to enable me to promote linkscast.com. Your money will double each year. By the year 2010, it will be worth £400,000. You can trust me that I have correct marketing skills. Um, I'd like to remind you of, uh, of your British saying, there's no such thing as a free lunch. If you visit my website, I'll give you a free lunch. With packs of free noodles and an enthusiastic pitch, Ling Valentine is hoping to secure a £50,000 investment in return for 5% of her web-based contract hire business. But Peter Jones already has queries about her eye-catching marketing techniques. Ling. Yeah. What on earth is with the advertising on the nuclear truck? With nuclear missile truck, nobody else got such a thing. And uh, I, used to, I used to put it next to A1, and it, it attracts uh, loads of publicity. Fantastic really? idea. Yeah. Where is it parked um, now? At the moment, this was very close to Darlington originally, but the council forced me to move, move it. Yeah. yeah, you know, <laughs> councils, councils, councils are terrible at the that. Plan, the planners yeah. got uh, they got left from John Prescott. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Link, how, how old are you? Thirty-three. Thirty-three, and you set this up two years ago. No, I set it up about uh, five years ago. I've been in this country for eight years. I came with nothing apart from perfect English. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. Moments of jocularity never last long in the den, and Richard Farley wants to talk business. So I can go to your site, yeah. and it will it's it's it just directs me to the best deals on other from other car brokers, does it? Other yeah, car dealers. What we do is we have a whole page with all the cars we think are the best deal available. The so you don't get involved in the deal, you just go, I just get directed from no, your side? No, 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 I get involved in the deal as well. I deal, so with, the, I deal with the dealer's finance company. But, but you're just picking up a commission, basically? Yeah. Well, I've yeah. got to say, you know... I so mean, so it's no risk of... Yeah, I've got I to say, to I've say, I've got to say uh, congratulations. Yeah. The profit yeah. is quite low, but the turnover is fantastic. So congratulations, sir. Thank you. Richard Farley seems impressed by the business behind Ling's gimmicks, but Peter Jones is concerned about the profit margins Ling has been quoting. You sell a million pounds worth of cars a month? Yeah. And a million pounds worth of cars generates you about 8,000 pounds profit? 
No, I said gr pro Crawford is over a hundred thousand. So what is the figure? Um, the year before, in 2000, uh, 2005, is 108,000 pounds. Okay, so 8,500 uh, a month. Yeah. And uh, last year was 125,000 pounds. So just over 10,000 pounds a month. Yeah. What did your accounts show um, for 2005? I just, uh, I just know roughly the, the figure, but I haven't really got it. Your income was 108,000. Yeah. And then, did there any money left? 108, my net... Um, my net profit is um, 70,000 because I left in the business and then 2006 I spent 25 grand with that money to do the marketing. I can't, I can't uh, do the, the marketing without any no, money no, left. I'm not saying, but did, you, did you actually show on your audited accounts 70,000 pounds before tax and then pay tax, corporation tax on 70,000 pounds? I think I spent, I paid up about quarterly about uh, um, about 5,000 tax or things because I, I don't do the book. You come here asking for money, you tell me you don't do the book. I would expect me to give you money if you can't tell me what you're making. Ling has been blasted by an infuriated Theopophetus over her tenuous grasp of the figures. Peter Jones has heard enough. Your lack of business now is, is terrifying. I well, I mean, my business is going well and, uh, and we're making money. But we I don't know how much. Uh, Ling, you can't even <laughs> tell me how much money you're making over three <clears throat> years. So what, uh, can you imagine me now giving you £50,000? I'm saying, Ling, what did you spend my £50,000 on? Oh, I don't know. I bought another missile. You, you haven't got a full understanding and appreciation of your business. And that's my problem. Fine. So I can't, I'm out. Ling is remaining defiant in the face of Peter Jones' refusal to invest in her business. Will any of the four remaining dragons offer her the £50,000 she's asking for? We're all in admiration of you, I'm in admiration of you, but that's not enough for me to want to invest in you at the moment. So, so you know, and you can address the others, I'm going to back out of here, so I'm out. And Thank I you. won't be investing. Ling, you've got a lot of what it takes to be a really successful entrepreneur. But I couldn't work with you because you can't get a straight answer. So I'm afraid for me, you've absolutely lost credibility. I'm really disappointed. So I'm out. Ling's in real trouble. Three dragons have walked away from the deal. By offering them just 5% for £50,000, she's valuing her business at a million pounds. And now only Duncan Bannatyne and Richard Farley stand between Ling and failure in the den. Ling, I think you're a good business person. You've been doing this for six years. You've created a business with great turnover, with a reputation. Um, on the valuation, I do have an issue. But just to get things moving a little bit, I would like to offer you half the money. But you have to understand it's going to be a completely different valuation than you're talking about. I, I would like to offer you half the money, but for 20%. To the disbelief of at least three of his rival dragons, Richard Farley has seen enough money-making potential in Ling's business to offer her half of the investment. Duncan Bannatyne is the only other dragon still in. Will he make up the other half? Maybe I'm going mad. But, you know, maybe this could just build up in a little business. It could be quite nice and we can maybe just continue. And I'll never find out unless I go half as with Richard, will I? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to match Richard's offer and I'm going to offer you £25,000 for 20% of the company. Ling has been offered all the investment she came for, but the Dragons are demanding a massive equity stake in return. 40% compared to the 5% she was offering. Will Ling be prepared to sell this much of her business? Well, I think it's a bit too much. I, I really refuse that. You're turning us down? Yeah. Well, Chinese eat dragons for breakfast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would say 5% each, 10% in total. Unintimidated by the dragons, Ling has decided to negotiate hard but will her tactics pay off? 
you know, the best I could offer you would be 25,000 pounds for 15% of the company. Now, if Richard matched that, that would be 50,000 pounds for 30% of the company. Ning, I would say I would match that, uh, and I would say that would be my final offer. So it'd be so 30 percent, 30 percent for the total of 50,000. Richard Farley and Duncan Bannatyne want this deal, and they've reduced their equity demand by 10 percent. It's decision time for Ling. Thank you. I, I refuse it. Ling, think about it. It's a fantastic. It's a great offer. It, it's an unbelievable offer. Take their money. Thank you for your money. Uh, I refuse that. Thank you. After a roller coaster session, Ling is leaving the den empty handed, unwilling to sacrifice such a large stake in her business for the dragon's cash and expertise. The multi millionaire investors are dumbfounded. Ling, you said the Chinese eat dragons for breakfast. Did, did you eat them or did they eat you today? Well, I walked away from their offer. You're turning us down. I mean, I think it's just getting bit, going a bit greedy. If I have to work that hard and uh, give away all my money, so I'm not happy with that. Well, very well done. OK, thanks a lot. Hello Dragons, my name is Lee, Lee Wood, and I am the Managing Director of Car Doctor, a motoring business with a difference, a unique difference. I'm looking for an investment today of £150,000, and in return for that we're prepared to give a stake of 15%. You probably are all aware of companies such as NHS Direct and PC Line, both of whom offer help and advice to the general public on health matters and computer problems. My company, which I believe is the first and will be the best, is being designed to offer help and advice to the motoring public. Very simple to understand and just in the same way as you phone a solicitor or you phone an accountant or anything like that, you pay for the advice you're given. There isn't anyone that's doing that and I don't see any reason why there shouldn't be someone doing it and that person should be me and my company. My tools used to be spanners and sockets and screwdrivers. Now it's mobile phones, laptops and other electronic equipment. And I highly recommend it to you. Thank you. Former garage owner Lee Wood is asking for a £150,000 investment in Car Doctor, a premium rate helpline for motorists who've got problems with their vehicles. Hey, Lee, I'm Duncan. Hello, Duncan. I don't get it, Lee. OK. So let's just try a little bit of role playing because I'm not yes. really sure what happens. That is okay. a common perception. People think, how can you fix my car by remote control? OK, so let's do it. Yes. I've got a Ford Escort. It started missing the third cylinder. That's what quite do? Right. First of all, that's quite specific information. So I'm going to assume that you've been told that or is that something you actually know? Let's just say I know it's missing in the third cylinder. OK. I would say, do you have any knowledge about working on cars? No. So we would then say, do you know a garage that you, that you can go to? And just ask them. Yeah, shall I take it to the garage? No, yes, but the difference is, if you took it to a garage, there is a risk, which is what happens, that you take it there and they say, you need a new engine, sir. But wait a minute. I've just rang you, but and you've I, told me to you take it to finish. the garage. You haven't let me finish. OK. I don't mind. With right. all due respects. Okay, I let's... would tell you to take it to the garage, or one of my advisors would tell you to take it to the garage. Yep. and give you specific questions to ask the garage. Excuse me, at this point, I've definitely said, can you speak to the man at garage, please? Yes, absolutely. No problem. We have no problem about speaking to the man at garage, because then we speak his language. I can see what you're, you're saying. Because you're a bit confused about the information you're being given, we have no problem about give, phoning the garage. We've had 38 people who have phoned us up about different problems, and it's, and it's Brom cars that are... I could do a few. If somebody rang me and said, my tyre's flat, I would say, it's got a puncture. One pound yes, 50. but you're really trivialising it. We're not talking about people who would phone us up saying a tyre's flat. We're talking about people who are facing big bills with uncertain the, information. The problem I just gave you is fairly simple. And you, no, you with all due respect, that's not a simple problem. It's a simple effect. 
it's not a simple cause, it's not simple to diagnose. And the biggest problem... No, it's not simple to diagnose. That's the problem. No, it's not. I, I, think, I think it's to difficult to diagnose, you can't diagnose no, on the telephone. So tell me, any, tell me a problem you okay. can diagnose on the telephone. I'll give you an example of people that have come to yep. us and thrown yep. problems at us that have asked Will us. Will I do it because I know nothing at all about cars? I've got a funny knocking sound at the back of the car. Right. My personal view with... If we speak to you and you say, I know nothing about cars, I'm in a rush, I want to get this fixed, I would actually suggest that the best, most cost-effective method for you would actually to take it for an MOT, because they will check every aspect of your suspension on an MOT. We've asked you two questions, and both of them, you've either referred us to a garage or to go and get an MOT done. But we don't, we don't come to you, we, we, we're an advice line. Lee is failing to explain the advantages of Car Doctor. Deborah Meaden is struggling to see the benefit of the service. Duncan Bannatyne has heard enough. Lee, you haven't convinced me at all that you can in any way help me to solve my problem. It's just a complete and utter waste of time to think you can diagnose a problem in a car by telephone but it's or not by email. Problems with a car. I could give you plenty of other examples, Duncan, that would make you realise that this is possible. You're focusing on something that you think there is are, impossible to solve. There are. And I think there are there are there are some very small problems you could answer. You no, could there solve. are some very big problems. We there are solve, some. And we have done small percentage of problems in cars could be resolved in a swift. A very small percentage. So you're never going to make any money whatsoever. I'm not with you. I'm not riding in this car. Mate. I'm out of it. I'm, I'm gone. I'm out. Duncan Bannatyne is out. Peter Jones needs more financial details to understand how he'd make any return on a hundred and fifty thousand pound investment. Lee, how much money are you going to make in year one? Well, what are you going to turn over? If they're all customers like you, maybe not as much as I thought, but I think the ordinary members of the public do have a need for... How the much money will you turn over in year one? Well, you're shaking me a little bit. I'll have to think about that for a minute, but, you know... How... Our estimates are based on the fact that there are 29 million cars and light commercial vehicles on the road, and the majority how... of those... Hang on, please. I don't want to know. I want no, to know an answer to, to know, my but question. I'm trying to give you an answer that you will understand no. and... Respect. Year one. I've not come here, I've not prepared, I've not done the evidence, I've not done the research Leave. Year to come one, here revenue. and be shot down in flames year from one, day one. Year one revenue, what is it? Year one revenue, we estimate about 150,000. How, how can you generate 150,000 pounds? Through calls, through the internet. Isn't that about 8,000 calls a month at £1.50? Yeah, we had five advisors. So you need 2,000 calls a week? No, we had five advisors answering five calls an hour. Five. You need approximately 400 calls every working day. How are you going to do that? 20, how many people? 20, 20 advisors. 20 advisors? Yeah. And what are you going to pay them? £7.50 an hour. So 20 advisors are going to cost you about 21000 a year for each one? Yeah. How much is that? 140. 20000 per year? Times 20. 20, sorry. 400,000 pounds a year to cover the calls when you're generating 150,000 pounds. I'm oh, sorry, I've got my figures wrong. No, you haven't got your figures wrong. I don't I think you're far been. wrong. I'm sorry, you've really shaken me and I've got to... S because I, the, we've worked out our figures. <coughs> Lee, who's we? I have my financial director, Howard. Is he here? Yep. Shall we... Let's bring him up. Let's chat to him. Lee's in real trouble. He's been torn apart on his figures by Peter Jones. If his financial director, Howard, can't piece the projections back together quickly, Lee's chances of investment look slim. We've just got stuck on the first year figures. I'd rather gather you talking about figures. Good afternoon. And Howard, I'll carry on the line of questioning. What I asked Lee was, what was the total revenue he's expecting in year one? He said £150,000. Yes. I said, what do you need to generate that? Yes. 20 advisors, £150,000 worth of income at £1.50 no, per no, call. No, 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 no. So take me through the you numbers. You have shaken me, and I do apologise. I'm not meant no, no, to try to mislead you at £150,000 revenue, that's generated from 15,000 calls. 15,000 calls? Yes. That so well, average, bring in £10 a time. So you two, three people at most to operate that to that standard. Howard's clarified the figures, but has he done anything to reassure Deborah Meaden about the business? I think what you are misunderstanding is the issues that you are going to cause 
not solve, because if you'd give me advice and my car goes wrong, I'm going to sue the living daylights out of you. So you should be sending me to the garage. The and the is. argument that is going to go on between my garage, who tells me that that's what's wrong with the car, and you on the telephone, who's never even looked at the car, diagnosing something else, it's not going to work, and I'm afraid I'm out. Deborah Meaden thinks Car Doctor will cause more problems than it'll solve and has declared herself out. Theo Pafitis is ready to say where he stands. You're at a hiding to nothing. You are going to get embroiled in so much hassle that you'll end up being busy fools. Anticipate. And you actually won't have operators generating income all the time. You'll have people trying to undo hassle Anticipate. that has been caused Sorry. by dealing with... I've been the dealing with hassle for 20 years. That's right. It I, is solvable. Yeah, Over it the is. Phone with time or and money. With time and money, it's solvable. And you haven't got either time or the money. No. That's where you misunderstood your business model. And when you get one unhappy customer, you're going to spend one of your operators a whole day because that person is going to be jumping up and down and screaming. That's the way it's going to end up. And for that reason, I too will not be investing. Lee's chances of securing £150,000 for a 15% stake in his business are dwindling fast. His only hopes for investment now lie with Peter Jones and Richard Farley. If you'd have come in today and said, I would like 30000 to try this idea, I would have said, OK, 30000 let's experiment with this concept. But £150,000, which is way too much to find out to experiment with, and valuing your business at £1 million is ridiculous. So, I'm out, gentlemen. Lee has lost four dragons and his bid is on the verge of collapse. <coughs> Only Peter Jones remains. Have you given up anything to do this? No, I sold my uh, motor business four years ago. Did you make I've, some money? Yes, I've, I've still retained. Are you putting any money in this business? I, I've done as much Are as you putting I, any money in this I, business? I, I can do if necessary. Don't. Don't put one penny into this idea. Because when you break down, you are not going to phone somebody that could diagnose but you're why you're focusing on breakdowns. Will you be quiet for one minute and breakdowns. listen? You've got two ears and one mouth for a reason. Please listen. I'm listening, you're but I'm not. trying to defend myself well, because don't... I thought long and hard about this before I even put some effort into it. You don't have reason. to defend yourself. All you have to do is hopefully absorb something that actually I, makes I you go away and learn saying. from the I've, experience. I will That's learn. all. I'm learning as, we, as, we, as I stand here. And Lee, there's nothing wrong with you walking away saying, I'm still going to do it and I'm going to show them and prove to them because you've no, got even I'm more I'm not going to do it to That's prove great. to you. I don't have anything to prove to any of you. I can't invest in you. No, I understand. And I'm out. It's all over for Lee and Howard. After a severe roasting from the dragons, they're leaving the den empty-handed. If he thinks that's a good idea, he needs a check-up from the neck up. Lee, how do you feel after that? I didn't quite realise they were going to be so fierce so quickly. I think we went into some fundamental errors. We overvalued the business. These are very experienced people. They don't give their money away easily. So I think if we come in a bit more realistically and offer them a bit more estate to start, which we talked a lot about, we might have got a better reception. But Car Doctor lives and will live on. My name's Derek Cousins, the company name is Flow Signals. I'm looking for £50,000 for 10% of the equity. This is a no entry sign. Now everybody knows what they mean, but some people manage to miss them. Now that's no big deal if it's just the slip road to the shops, but when it's the slip road to the M4, the M5 or the M8, it's a whole different scenario. Look at them face on and they're fine, but there are actually very few junctions where you'll see them face on. You see the side on view which can be extremely limiting. So, we fit a flow signal. It's red in colour. It's mimicking the traffic that is coming towards you. It's visible for 180 degrees. It's visible in heavy rain and fog. 
turn away and you'll see this in your peripheral vision. You see, this is a 1931 no entry sign and this is a 2010 no entry signal and it's much safer. This is a one way street sign, but what do you see if you go the wrong way? You see nothing. So we fit a flow signal. This time it's angled towards the traffic that's going the wrong way down the road. It is saying to them, here John, you are going the wrong way. You're going, you're going through a strange town. You've never been there before. You're coming to the traffic lights. Turn right. You have to turn right. The one thing you need to know is, is there oncoming traffic? Do I have to give way? But what tells you there's oncoming traffic? Nothing. So we fit a flow signal. Oops. It's gone the way of all demos. So we fit a flow signal. It's amber in colour. It's telling you there is traffic coming into the junction from this direction. Any time that the traffic lights, these traffic lights, are anything other than red, solid red, you will see this burning and turning. You see, once this is fitted, you will not turn right in front of that learner driver who's just found the, the gear. You will not turn right in front of young Susie who's been busy doing her makeup because someone will toot behind her and she'll fly forward straight into you. And you'll wait for that car in the distance because he will be on top of you before you've finished your turn. Thank you for listening. I'm looking for your support to get this project off the ground. There are other applications for these signals as well. An ambitious proposal from Hertfordshire inventor Derek Cousins. He wants to revolutionise the nation's existing traffic signs and signals. But to do it, needs a £50,000 investment from the Dragons. Peter Jones just looks bewildered. I don't even know, I'll be perfectly honest, I'm not even sure I know what it is. But what I do see is a flow flashing light right. on a sign. Yeah. Has it cost you a lot of money to do? Um, about £24,000 so far, yeah. £24,000? Yeah. You, you are serious about this? Yes, go on. What's, what a yeah. flashing light on a, on a pole? Yeah. Yes, I'm serious about this. But wouldn't... <laughs> Can I please... It's not often I say yeah, this. Could one of the other dragons please interrupt me? Oh, um, hello, Derek. <laughs> hello, it's Deborah. <laughs> Derek, um... Have you had this approved? No. But something needs to be done because... So, at the moment, you have absolutely no idea because you know there's very strict regulation. Oh, yes, I know that. But you haven't done anything at all about it. Oh, that. no, I've, I've, the, the lady who runs the signs and signals doesn't like the idea. She doesn't like the idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> OK, Jerry. all right, well, another dragon, <laughs> please interrupt me. Not a great start for the inventor. Perhaps Theopophetus can bring some order to proceedings. Well, uh, Derek, yeah, I'm going to give you £50,000. Yeah. How am I going to make a profit from it? Well, because we'll be selling these, these signs worldwide. And no one else will be able to do these? Yeah, I've got a pattern on it. What have you got a pattern for? Because it's a, a, a good idea. No, 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 they, no. What have you got a pattern for? For, for what? For oh. using a display, which display... You see, it's mimicking the traffic that's coming towards you. It's red, it's highly visible, you'll see it in your peripheral vision, so when you're coming along, instead of missing the no-entry signs, which are up too high, which you can't see at the right angle, you will see this in your eye. What is it that you've got a pattern on? If you can it's, tell it's me. On, it's on these signs and their, their, their deployment for, for road safety applications. It's to do with mimicking traffic coming yep. towards you. Derek, listen. Yeah. Answer this question truthfully. You can't really think you can get a pattern for flashing lights to stick on poles and make a fortune. Yes, I do. Derek's steadfast belief in his product may be admirable, but that's not enough for Peter Jones. One thing that worries me, you spent £24,000. Yes. I need you, on all seriousness, this needs to be your wake-up moment. This will save lives. This will not save it lives will. at all. It and in fact, it could even be a major distraction if we're going to get serious. These signs have been in existence for a long time. They've been in the, the highway the code has been in existence for a long time. Yeah. We all know it. We all get it. Do not spend one more pound trying to push this into the marketplace. This is ridiculous. And for that reason, I'm out. Okay, fine. Derek, can I ask you, has anybody told you they think this is a good idea? 
Any chief constables? Any, any, anybody no, who can actually possibly any. have any influence at all no. on them ever, ever, ever being used or sold? Well, can I explain a little no, bit Yes or no? Say? Just give me some names. No, no, I haven't got any names to give you. So the answer is nobody. The answer is nobody. So we, you stand in front of us with the person who's going to make a decision on whether or not they're introduced, telling you categorically, this is not going to happen, I do not like it and I sit here smiling, and then I get serious. I have never met you in my life before. I am pleading with you not to do it. Won't affect my life at all, but it is going to affect your life. Well, can I, can I finish telling you about the, the no. traffic light incident? No, yeah? no, you okay. can't. Well, you can then, but you can't tell oh, me, because okay. I'm not at all interested. Oh. I'm out. I, I'm struggling, Derek. I've been driving for 30 years, and yeah. I've never not recognised the no-entry sign. You know, are, well, you, are well, you trying to solve... I know you haven't missed them, but people do miss them. Look in your highway code. There is no wrong way sign in the UK. I'm just going to let you hear... I'm out. I'm out. A remarkably composed Derek sees three dragons walk away from the deal. And Theo Pafitis is now ready to have his say. It isn't going to work. Give it up. No. Nope. Derek, yeah, okay. well, I'm out. OK, well, would you listen to me, Duncan, for five minutes? I'll listen to you, Derek. Thank you. Right, there's another application which is, this also addresses, and one is that when you're in a car park and you're looking for the exit sign, the one thing, you, the one thing you've got is that your eyes, you look yeah. round, you're looking for that, that arrow sign. Yeah. And if you have it going red... So what happens is that when, when all the arrows are all covered in snow and you can't see any of the arrows or they, they've worn out or you can't see... You'll look down one way and you'll see the red going down the way and you'll see the, 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 the green and the blue the other way telling you that the green taking you towards the exit and the blue taking you towards mole parking. Derek, I said I'd listen to you because I wanted, didn't want to be impolite. Um, is there much more? Well, I, I, was, I haven't really finished explaining about the traffic light problem. You win the worst invention ever to be brought into Dragon's Den. To death. Really? Um, the prize is yours. And Derek, I'm out. Thank you. Going from the left hand side, you look at the no entry sides and see how easy it is for you to miss them. Derek, Derek, thank you. Thank that you. way. Derek, that way. Down there. There's a sign there that way. It's a swift exit for Derek. These dragons don't waste time when they can't see an opportunity. 